So I wanted to give you a walkthrough of the Docker Compose file that I'm using on this newsletter project. Basically, host up all my services with a click of a button. Um, it's really useful for local development, and I want to kind of walk you through why you may want to use this if your project has a lot of people or your project becomes larger in scale. So one of the main issues with software development is that you have potentially you know, 5, 10, 20 different developers all trying to work on the same project. And some of these projects have different dependencies, right? Some projects might need node version 14. Some might need, some might need node version 16 or 18. Some need, you know, SQLite installed. Some needs MongoDB or DynamoDB installed. And the issue with that is that if you have 20 people all trying to set up this project, there's a high chance that something is going to break on their machine because they installed the wrong version of a database or they have the wrong version of node. And you end up spending like the whole day trying to help this person out and you realize, oh, you're just on the wrong version of Node. If we just had a way to make this all consistent for all of our 10 or 20 developers on our project, um, you know, this wouldn't be an issue. So that's one aspect of Docker. You can also use Docker to, you know, containerize and deploy your services. I'm not gonna really talk about that in this video because I'm not doing that in this video. I'm basically just using a Docker Compose file so that any developer can clone my repo and with one button, they can basically get the entire application running. They don't have to read through a readme that has 30 or 40 steps that says, okay, now you have to install MongoDB. Now you have to install um, DynamoDB local. Now you got to install SES local. And then they have to be on a certain version. Like, there's none of that, right? It's pretty straightforward. So let me just kind of show you the magic real quick. I have a, a service here that has a UI written in Next, has an API written in Express. It has a local DynamoDB instance. So I can actually store stuff into a database. Um, it has some way or some script you have to run to basically inject some seed data into that uh, database. We have an admin dashboard panel where I can actually view the database. And I also have a local running like SES mock service so I can see when emails are potentially getting sent out. That's a lot of things. If you imagine coming into this project as a beginner and having to npm run this and then load up another terminal and then load up another terminal and npm run this one and load up another terminal and do it for this one and that one and that one. It's a lot of extra steps and then you have to make sure that the every developer has the proper versions, which it's just not going to work, right? So Docker is great because what a, a developer can do who joins this project is they can say Docker compose up. And keeping my fingers crossed, I didn't break anything before I made this video. This is actually going to spin through all of these different services I have laid out in this Docker Compose file. And that's going to basically run them, right? So you can see here on the left, we have different colors of the services. We have UI, API, DynamoDB, local. They're all initializing. They're all getting set up. Um, and at some point, they should be done initializing. And I can actually go to my application. So let's just go ahead and go to localhost 3000. This should be kind of finished running soon. And there you have it. The entire application is set up. We have the DynamoDB finished creating tables. And I think at this point we should be good to actually use the app. So if I were to go here and just go ahead and say a web dev Cody and go ahead and click subscribe, notice that everything works fine. It's actually doing a request to localhost 310, which is where my API is. That's hitting a, a database. There is a little web UI running where I can view my database and view the data. And all this stuff was set up with literally one command. You guys just watched me do this. I literally typed one command and it spun everything up. And then also if I command C, it'll spin everything down, right? It'll stop running those services. It takes like five to 10 seconds for my application to turn everything off. But all that stuff is contained inside of running Docker images. And I don't have to worry about a lot of stuff, right? A lot of that stuff is abstracted away. And it's very easy for anyone to just clone this repo, run one command, and be able to hit the ground running with adding in some new features. So the the gist of this, let's kind of give you a quick walkthrough of like what, how do you do, how do you do this? Like how do you set this up? Um, so the first thing I did, and again I'm trying to figure out this is even the best way to do it. I'm still trying to learn Yarn workspaces a little bit, so I might not be doing everything proper. But all I'm doing is you declare something called a Docker file, which describes your image, right? What operating system and what version of Node do you want? Now, if you look at this, this says Node 18. Um, there's actually something called Docker Hub where you can go and you can search for different Docker containers, right? So in this case, there's one already called Node right here. And if you go and look through the tags, 
you'll see that there's one called node 16 or 18. Let me just type um, 18. Let's see. So I can use any of these tags. I could potentially say 18.13.0. I could have potentially just put 18, which is what I did. And you can see an example over here where it says node pool 18. So this is what the from thing does basically. It means go to the internet, download this container and use that as my starting point. And then you can start running some additional commands. So if you're kind of familiar with bash or um, you know, dealing with like Linux and the command line, you can start running different shell commands to update the machine and upgrade the packages on the machine. Um, and then what you could do is you can specify inside the, the image itself, what directory do we want to start doing stuff, right? In our case, we're saying go to home slash app. That's going to be our like current working directory where all of our code's going to live. And we're going to copy over some files from this, this um, directory I'm currently in, right? So this copy command basically looks at your files here and it's going to copy from your host into the container. So in our case, we're saying copy the package JSON from here, copy the package JSON from business, from API, copy all of these workspaces package JSONs and put them in the corresponding locations. And then I'm going to run a yarn inside the container itself. Okay, so this will take like a minute to run. It installs all the node modules, uh, sets up the workspaces, symlinks, uh, symlinks. And then, so what do we do from here, right? We have this, this image. We just built a Docker image that has all of our node modules set up, but it doesn't have any of our code in it, right? It's just a kind of a skeleton project with a bunch of node module folders and package JSONs. So the next step is inside of Docker Compose, you can start defining some services and you can say, okay, I want to use the build context, which basically means everything in this directory. I want to kind of mount everything in this directory and link it inside of that image that we just that up. So it kind of like does a merge between all the existing node modules that are in the box and everything that's currently in this directory, right? Um, but there are some caveats. I basically have to tell it to ignore some files. Like I don't want it to bring over the node modules that are in the top level directory of the host machine, because if I do, the host machine might be in Windows, might be in Linux, might be in Mac. And I don't want those binaries that were potentially built with like Node GYP to overwrite the binaries that were built inside of this um, node 18 container, which I don't know what this is. It might be bullseye, it might be Debian, it might be Ubuntu. I don't know, but the binaries might mismatch. And this is why I'm saying, okay, I do not want to pull over the node modules that are in the host machine, but I do want to pull over every other file that exists on this host machine. So that's what this is doing. It sets up like a, a, a service. And I, you know, you can specify some environment variables like I'm doing here. You can specify what ports we need to map to. This is the host name port, and this is the inside the container port. So for example, if the UI is running on port 5,000, but I wanted to be able to go to port, you know, localhost 2000 on my laptop, I could do that, All right? So inside the container, you might have next running on port 5,000, but outside the container, you want to hit it at port 3,000. That's just an example. And then the, uh, the meat and potatoes of this is what do you do when you have this container set up. Well, you need to be able to run something. And in our case, we're saying, I'm going to do a yarn workspace and I want to go into the UI workspace and I want to run the dev command. That's going to basically run next inside of this container. And it's going to host it on port 3000. I'm going to map it to 3000 on this host machine. And there you have it. You have next running and I can actually access it, which is what you saw um, earlier when I showed you this. This was the next that's running inside the container. So basically copy and paste what I just said for everything. We do the same thing for the API. We do the same thing for Dynamo Local, Dynamo Setup. There's one cool thing about Dynamo Setup, which it's saying it, this depends on Dynamo DB Local to finish running before you start running the script, right? So you need to make sure the database is fully running before you start trying to inject C data. So that's why this depends on is here. There's probably some cleanup I could do with the environment variables and stuff like that. This thing should probably not be an NPM. This thing should probably be a, a yarn workspace. And then I should probably say like at WDC, um, newsletter slash business. And then I want to go ahead and run Dynamo setup. Make sure I don't have NPM anywhere else there. I was originally using NPM workspaces. I decided to refactor the yarn workspaces. They seem like it's a little bit nicer. It's a nicer uh, developer experience. And um, I'm sure I missed something about Docker. Docker is a very, very complex thing. It has a lot of things you can kind of dive into and learn. 
but I just want to kind of like walk you through some of the things that I'm doing on this project just to kind of get you exposed to Docker if you haven't seen it before and kind of you know letting you know that there's benefits to Docker. Some people think this is a lot of overhead, but when you get on a larger team, are you let's say you work on multiple projects. Let's say you have five or six different clients and they all have different projects. One's in Go, one's in Python, one's in uh, you know JavaScript and Node.js. It's very easy to just CD into your project, do a Docker Compose up, and then everything needed for that project is just set up. Right, the same like which is kind of what I showed you at the start of this video, right? Everything you'd ever need to to work on this project, it's right there. It's all outlined in a Docker Compose file, and you can hit the ground running just by writing a single command. Well, I hope you guys uh, take some time to look into Docker. I do think it's super important to understand and learn as a web developer. And if you guys like watching this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, press the bell icon, and like always, I have a Discord channel if you want to join to either talk to me directly or just find a place to ask questions if you're stuck on coding. And I also have a newsletter, so check out the description below. Click on the newsletter link. Go ahead, subscribe to that if you want to get tips and tricks in the future about web development or React or whatever. Anyway, have a good day and happy coding.